Goodwill brings to you the weekly share market update dated the 20th of July, 2024. Talking about the corporate segment, we have Shares of Zen Technologies Limited jumped 5% to 1,361 rupees to be locked in the upper circuit on July 15 after it said it introduced AI-powered robots and launched for defense products. The company launched new IP-owned defense products for global security in collaboration with its subsidiary, AI Turing Technologies. These products include Hawkeye, Barbaric URCWS, Ultralight Remote Control Weapon Station, Prahasta, and Thurstab 640. Here's a small description of each launch. Hawkeye, an advanced anti-drone system camera with multiple sensor modules capable of tracking drones up to 15 kilometers in all weather conditions, ensuring continuous threat detection and heightened security. Barbaric, URCWS, recognized as the world's lightest remote-controlled weapon station, Barbaric, URCWS offers precise targeting capabilities for ground vehicles and naval vessels, optimizing battlefield effectiveness and minimizing operational risks. Prahasta, an automated quadruped equipped with LIDAR and reinforcement learning technology, Prahasta offers real-time 3D terrain mapping for mission planning, navigation, and threat assessment. It supports various caliber weapons and is a versatile tool for frontline defense operations. Thurstab 640, designed for armored vehicles, boats, and ICVs, Thurstab 640 features an advanced stabilized sight system using fiber-optic gyroscope technology. It enhances situational awareness with automatic search and tracking capabilities, supporting a wide range of weapon systems from 12.7mm to 30mm. Aurobindo Pharma shares zoomed over 6% to a fresh record high of 1,409.9 rupees on July 15 as investors lapped up the stock ahead of its board meeting to consider a buyback plan on July 18. If approved, this will mark the first ever buyback program to be executed by the drug maker. The buyback of equity shares could either be through the tender offer route or through the open market route. The news of a probable buyback also tipped off a spike in volumes in the counter as 45 lakh shares changed hands on the exchanges so far, three times the one-month daily traded average of 15 lakh shares. Shares of Aurobindo Pharma have also delivered over 90% returns in the past year, thanks to the improving prospects of generic drug makers amid easing price pressure and drug shortages in the US market. Aside from the current discussions over a buyback, the company split its shares and issued a bonus share in 2015. Since then, there have been no further bonus issues by the company or a stock split. In between, Aurobindo Pharma has paid interim dividends to shareholders ranging between 1 rupee to 4.5 rupees per share. The highest dividend of 4.5 rupees per share was paid in 2022, based on available records. Shares of Bharti Hexacom surged as much as 9.5% on July 16 after global brokerage JP Morgan initiated coverage on the stock with an overweight tag. The brokerage assigned a price target of 1,280 rupees for the stock, foreseeing a 20% upside potential from the previous closing level. Volumes in the counter were also higher, as 1.7 million shares changed hands on the exchanges so far more than the one-month daily traded average of 1.1 million shares. JP Morgan also called Bharti Hexacom the best pure play in the Indian market for communication solutions. Bharti Hexacom is the best play on market repair thesis, given its presence in wireless as compared to Bharti Airtel and Vodafone idea, JP Morgan stated. The company also operates in two underpenetrated circles of Rajasthan and the Northeast, that have lower telecom density, internet penetration, and post-paid mix. Thanks to the underpenetration in these areas, the company enjoys stronger tailwinds from subscriber growth and organic ARPU, average revenue per user, expansion, JP Morgan noted. More so, the company's ARPU is only 2% lower than Bharti Airtel's, which according to JP Morgan suggests that its underlying returns will remain superior. Further, JP Morgan anticipates a 15% tariff hike each in financial year 2025 and financial year 2026 for Bharti Hexacom, which will drive a 17% and 21% revenue and EBITDA CAGR, respectively, over financial year 2024-27.
As a result of these tariff hikes and decreasing capital expenditures, the brokerage expects dividend payouts to rise from 23% in financial year 2024 to 34% in financial year 2027, owing to the improving free cash flow. Shares of Mahanaga Telephone Nigam Limited skyrocketed 20% to hit a multi-year high at RS 64.08 on NSE amid heavy volumes. The SHRAP rally comes after the government deposited 92 rupees crore to clear immediate bond interest dues of the state-owned telecom service provider. Earlier this month on July 11, MTNL disclosed that it could not fund the escrow account for the payment of semi-annual interest on the Series 8A bonds due to insufficient funds. The payment of the bonds is due on July 20, and as per the structured payment mechanism, the designated trust and retention account is to be funded by MTNL, 10 calendar days i.e., T year 10, before the due date, to the tune of the interest and or principal obligations on the bonds. On July 15, Bloomberg reported that MTNL had fallen short of funds to honor its debt due later this week. MTNL has local bonds worth 4,810 rupees crore or $576 million to service for the rest of 2024. The state-run telco could not pay interest on its 7.59% July 2033 bonds, which are guaranteed by the government. Interest payments on 14 bonds are due between July and December this year. Following this, reports surfaced that the union government will honor all interest obligations payments for MTNL's bonds. Sources privy to the matter told CNBC TV18 that the government will honor its commitments on sovereign guarantees given for MTNL bonds and will pay whenever the sovereign guarantee is invoked on MTNL's bonds. Shares of IDBI Bank soared nearly 5% on July 18 after the Reserve Bank of India issued a fit and proper report on bidders, advancing the divestment process, according to sources reported by CNBC Awars. The bank has been slated for privatization for several years, with market watchers eagerly awaiting the central bank's assessment of the bidders. The RBI's evaluation ensures that the bidders meet that fit and proper criteria complying with regulations to proceed to the next stage of the privatization process. The central government holds a 45.5% stake in IDBI Bank, with LIC as the largest shareholder at over 49%. The plan involves selling 60.7% of the bank, including the government's 30.5% stake and LIC's 30.2% stake. Following the RBI's completion of the vetting process, the government will grant qualified bidders access to confidential IDBI bank data, including employee pension funds and insurance or medical coverage details. To qualify, bidders for IDBI bank must have a minimum net worth of 22,500 rupees crore and have reported net profits in three of the last five years. A bidding consortium can have up to four members, and the successful bidder must lock in at least 40% of the equity capital for five years. Shares of Rail Vikas Nigam Limited jumped nearly 9% to hit an intraday high of 638 rupees after the company announced a memorandum of understanding, MAU, with Israel's United Construction Limited. The MAU between RVNL and United Construction aims to explore and secure projects across a diverse range of sectors, including railways, mass rapid transit systems, tunnels, highways and expressways, bridges, building works, airports, ports, irrigation, power transmission and distribution, and renewable energy sectors such as solar and wind. In addition to this strategic partnership, RVNL also reported a favorable arbitration outcome. The humble tribunal awarded 584.22 rupees crore to Krishnapatnam Railway Company Limited in arbitration case No. 33 of 2019 against the Ministry of Railways. KRCL is a joint venture and special purpose vehicle of RVNL in which it has a 49.76% stake. RVNL, a Navratna Central Public Sector Enterprise under the Ministry of Railways, was incorporated in 2003 to address the country's growing infrastructural needs and to expedite project implementation. Serving as the construction arm of the Ministry of Railways, RVNL handles project execution from concept to commissioning and forms project-specific SBVs to mobilize extra-budgetary resources through a mix of equity and debt. RVNL was established on January 24, 2003, and launched its IPO on March 29, 2019, subsequently listing on April 11, 2019.
Shares of JSW Infrastructure fell nearly 6% after the company reported an annual decline in its consolidated net profit for the quarter ended June, driven by higher expenses. The company's shares have gained over 48% in the past six months, significantly outperforming the Nifty 50, which gained over 13% during the same period. For the June quarter, JSW Infrastructure's net profit fell 9% year-on-year to 292 point for rupees crore, while total expenses surged 40% year-on-year to 712.1 rupees crore. Meanwhile, revenue from operations rose 15% year-on-year to 1,009.8 rupees crore. Revenue growth is driven by an increase in cargo volume and a change in the realization mix, the company said in an investor presentation. The total cargo handled by JSW infrastructure rose 9% year-on-year to 27.8 million tons in quarter 1 financial year 2025. Boosted by the increased revenue, the company's EBITDA also rose 24% year-on-year to 609 rupees crore in quarter 1 financial year 2025. The EBITDA margin expanded to 55.1% in quarter 1 financial year 2025 from 53.5% in the same period last year. JSW Infrastructure operates and manages ports and terminals, handling various types of cargo, including dry bulk, break bulk, liquid bulk, gases, and containers. The company also offers cargo handling, end-to-end -end logistics, and storage solutions. Tata Teleservices Limited has moved up by 33.19% this week with a change of 25.45 points, it has traded with a net volume of 593 million shares. The share is currently trading at the price level of 102.1 for against the previous closing price of 76.69. Meanwhile, the share price is trading above its moving average 82.33, which is a good indication for the stock. The stock has made the highest move to 111 point for zero points this week. While, shares are trading with a relative strength index of around 68.32. Just Dial Limited has moved up by 24.04% this week with a change of 242.75 points, it has traded with a net volume of 20.813 million shares. The share is currently trading at the price level of 1,252.45 against the previous closing price of 1,009.70. Meanwhile, the share price is trading above its moving average 1,051.72 which is a good indication for the stock. The stock has made the highest move to 1,304.60 points this week. While, shares are trading with a relative strength index of around 72.60. India Cements Limited has moved up by 16.52% this week with a change of 49.20 points, it has traded with a net volume of 102.893 million shares. The share is currently trading at the price level of 347.50 against the previous closing price of 297.85. Meanwhile, the share price is trading above its moving average 273.34, which is a good indication for the stock. The stock has made the highest move to 354.35 points this week. While, shares are trading with a relative strength index of around 77.37. Nifty is currently in positive trend. If you are holding long positions then continue to hold with daily closing stop loss of 24,461. Fresh short position can be initiated if Nifty closes below 24,461 levels. Nifty support levels are 24,408, 24,285 and 24,061. Nifty resistance levels are 24,754, 24,978 and 25,101. Bank Nifty is currently in negative trend. If you are holding short positions, then continue to hold with daily closing stop loss of 52,757. Fresh long position can be initiated if Bank Nifty closes above 52,757 levels. Bank Nifty support levels are 52,079, 51,892 and 51,639. 
Bank Nifty resistance levels are 52,519, 52,773, and 52,960. You can reach us via phone, WhatsApp, or email using the information listed on the screen. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more financial insights. And, as always, if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, leave them in the comments section below. Until next time, happy investing!